So just a quick thought. First Peter 3, 9. Uh, but do not forget this one thing, dear friends. The Lord, With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. I just want to focus on um, 1 Peter 3, 8. With the Lord... Or 2 Peter 3, 8. A day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. And, you know, I just... I get tired of eschatology, but it's not just eschatology. It's just anybody in their judgment looking and measuring other people, measuring themselves, and um, and essentially using, you know, our three dimensions, height, width, depth, um, you know, and our movement through that to somehow attain identity, and where it's so clear that God says a thousand years is like a day, and a day is like a thousand years. So, you know, you you look at the other verses, the lamb who was slain before the beginning of the world. So Jesus' sacrifice happened before everything, before the creation of everything. You know, and another verse, Jesus said, why do you judge by mere appearance? Instead, why don't you judge, which the word for that is optus, instead, why don't you judge correctly? And, you know, some other verses where he talks about, you know, I tell you the truth, if a man looks at a woman lustfully, he's already committed adultery in his heart. Um, he says, if you say something like Raka, you've already committed murder, where he looked at the Pharisees and said to them, um, why are you trying to kill me? And they looked back at him and said, you're crazy. No one's trying to kill you. And so I see sometimes preachers get up. And they kind of disregard this idea that um, no one will know the day or the time. And they go and they point to Israel and they point to, you know, the harbinger or 9-11 or whatever it is. And they, they say, aha, see, aha, aha, aha. And they measure. But the problem with this is that it's measuring this external. It's trying to take the external, um, which is height, width, depth, and trying to put it into an attribute to say, to define, you know, some sort of return of Christ. And I just don't, it seems to me that, I don't know, I just, if God is so clear in saying, look, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. He's talking about the spirit. He's talking about saying, he's talking about saying, hey, whatever you've got there, let's say, here's my point. Whatever we have here on earth, time-based, is going away. Look, this flesh here is crumbling. One thing that we're guaranteed of is that this flesh here is gone. From a thousand-year perspective, it's already gone. From a thousand years from now, when we look at the flesh, our bodies, done. Our spirits, alive. So why do we take measurements in this external flesh and try to attain some sort of definition to say, oh, he's coming back now, or... Or even for that matter, it's kind of the same to say, oh, did you see what that person did? They are this. Not true. That's identity. That's identity. It's identifying people, and you can't do that. Jesus says, why do you judge on mere appearance? God calls things that are not as though they were. You know, I want to do some more videos on this, but I just want to encourage us to be Listen, a thousand years is like a day, and a day is like a thousand years. So how, when we're moving through time and space, if all of it's backwards and, and it's forwards, 
ultimately, if any man is going to come to God, he must first of all believe that God exists and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him, i.e., he calls things that are not as though they were. So, so are we going to look to the past, take our tape measure out, and say, oh, Israel is being invaded, or, you know, whatever it is. There's a million different things that eschatology folks use. Or perhaps, what if the second coming of Christ happens individually as each person's eyes get open? Maybe. What if it's both? You know, the one thing that I don't hear a lot of people talking about is where there's a dead body, there the vultures will gather. Well, where is the dead body? Here it is. This is it. This body that you're looking at is dead. In a thousand-year perspective, this body was born dead. So this thing that we're looking at in a thousand years, it's gone. So why would I trust in it? Why would I look at this and say, oh, I can attain some sort of identity, some sort of truth out of something that I know is crumbling? Heck, at 42, I can feel it. You know, it's crumbling. Why would I put any truth in it? That's a dead body. So why would I gather around that? And why would I measure it to attain some sort of truth? It just doesn't work. The truth is that God loves you. God says you're precious. God says you're a treasure. And you can't measure that. You can't look at your works. You can't look at your actions to say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm wonderful because I did this or didn't do that or I made this type of money or had this type of power or treated this person that way or myself that way. No. God speaks things that are not as though they were. The minute it happens, if you look back, he takes no pleasure in those who shrink back. Sarah was turned into, a, or I'm sorry, Lot's wife was turned into a pillar of salt because she turned around. Okay, listen, I just want to encourage a day is like a thousand years. A thousand years is like a day. There's no ability. God says it so clearly. Even the Son of Man would not know when his own second coming was going to happen. Only the Father. Jesus himself said, I don't even know. So how can we, in our arrogance and pride, think that we could measure anything? Ultimately, if any man is going to come to God, he must first of all believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You're loved. You're precious. You're valuable. That's it. Beyond that, there's nothing. Because when this passes away, that's all we've got is to give glory to the Savior, to say thank you, Father, for calling me out of the darkness into the light, calling me wonderful, beloved, precious, why not step into eternity right now and step in faith instead of measuring everything and simply walk into the, into the unseen, walk into the unseen to say, okay, I don't see it, but I want to believe it. I can't prove that I'm precious, but I'm going to believe it. That's it. God bless. Take care.